Lovely. So we'll start here with the general electrode that we, well, general cell that we look at, right? The electrochemical cell. Right, so we're going to start off here, right? We have copper in a solution of copper nitrate, so a metal suspended in a solution with ions. This is this typical half cell, right? So we're going to have the half cell here in one molar solution, right, of copper nitrate, well, copper 2 nitrate specifically, right? So we have this here, right? So what's going to happen is that the copper itself, right, um, electrons from the copper, right, the copper is going to be, okay, let's start here. The oxidation half cell, right? Oxidation is going to take place. The cation is going to be produced here, and electron is going to be left within the metal, right? Metals, they remember from forces of attraction, from structure and bonding, right? This is going to allow the metal is going to allow movement of the electrons, right? It's a free um, sea of electrons, right, within the structure. So electrons are able to move, right, through the wire here. Right, so we're gonna have a wire here. So the electrons that are lost, right, from the copper, right, is gonna be moving through this voltmeter here, and it's gonna come over here into this electrode over here. This is a silver electrode, right? And here we have reduction occurring, right? So the silver ions are gonna actually be taking up the electrons that were coming from the copper electrode that was over here, right? So since reduction is happening here. This is a cathode, and since oxidation is happening over where the copper is, that's the anode, right? The anode is negative, the cathode is positive, all right? Lovely, right? So what's going to happen here now? So the only way this flow of electrons could occur is if the circuit is closed. The only way we can close the circuit without interfering with the reaction, right, is creating some amount of pathway for charge to flow that doesn't um, allow the solutions to overlap and this is what we use the salt bridge for so we can allow the movement of these ions right so the so the nitrate can move to the salt bridge to over here right and the salt bridge usually has a solution of some amount of um, alkali metal um, nitrate alkali metal chloride so it has to be a, it's generally a, a alkali metal chloride or nitrate because chlorides and nitrates are highly soluble so you need to be able for these these charges to flow right so we're gonna have the movement of the negative um ion right negative ion here to where the oxidation half cell is and the movement of the positive ion to where the reduction half cell is right and that allows for charge to flow and to make sure that we keep the solutions electrically neutral that is the purpose of the salt bridge to allow charge to flow without mixing solutions and to make sure that solutions are kept electrically neutral so that current can continue to flow lovely right so what that is what's happening here with this entire thing here all right so the reason why we have oxidation occurring at copper and reduction occurring at silver is all because of their reactivity right so based on the reactivity series which one of these metals are more reactive copper copper is more reactive than silver therefore copper is going to be when we talk about reactive what do metals do metals tend to gain or lose electrons which one lose electrons more readily lovely so if it's going to if copper is higher on the reactivity series the electrochemical series it's going to want to lose electrons more right that means that it has a higher reduction potential right so basically what it's saying right what is it saying copper has a higher reducing power right and redu higher reducing power means that you have a higher tendency of losing electrons so it's the co it's the um the metal with a higher reducing power that will be over here that will be contributing the electrons so that the other metal can be reduced that makes sense right that should make sense right so the one with the higher reducing power will be the anode because it is where oxidation is going to take place right and here i use the third general thing anode then the bridge then the cathode right a b c we always write cells like this 
it is a general notation or general schematic that chemists use to keep things standardized. So we all write the anode on the left, the bridge between, and the cathode on the right. A, B, C, anode, bridge, cathode, or anode before cathode. This is our understanding of this electrochemical cell. Are there any questions? Just to add, right, if the copper has a higher electro a, a higher redu reduction potential, right, than the silver, right, there's going to be a di difference in their potentials, right? And that's what voltage is, the potential difference across two of these half cells. One has a higher potential than the other. So the difference of these potentials is the voltage that is being measured. Yet again, are there any questions? Sir, so you went to the standard hydrogen electrode, right? Mm -hmm. Sir? Mm -hmm. Yes, I did. Okay, so when we get a standard hydrogen electrode, and say for instance, we want to find the voltage of Fe2 plus and Fe3 plus. You can mm -hmm. use the same platinum electrode in both of them, right? Yes, you can. Alright. Let's have a look at something like this, right? This is how the hydrogen electrode is looking when we're finding the electrode potential of silver specifically. So, this is how it would be set up in this case. And yet again, similar to what I was saying that when I first looked at this topic, right? I use these schematics because it shows that it's really it's rather easy to draw these that we obviously we don't want to draw them. So it's rather easy to draw them, right? Have that there. And we know that the hydrogen, standard hydrogen electrode would not be contributing anything to the voltage. Therefore the true voltage of this cell is being shown, which is positive 0 0.80 volt. Positive is important, put the positive side. Right? Yes, you can leave it without the positive voltage. If, if that's fine. But I just I'm just saying what I do. Right? It's up to you. Oh, I do too. But I always put positive in front of it to make sure that I know what I'm doing. Alright. So if you you can use the platinum electrode for for stuff that are not solids, right? So if it's not a metal, then you can use the platinum electrode for that. Right? So we have that there. Okay. We also have to know how to do cell notation diagrams and stuff like that, right? So hopefully we know how to do those.